Hey guys, over the last month I've been getting settled into a brand new studio and as a result I've been doing a whole bunch of upgrades to equipment. And this new room that I've built has the full proper acoustic treatment on it which has made an absolute world of difference. And I have another video series which I will be posting on that, but let me just say that this is the best by far listening environment that I've ever been in. So as a result, I've chosen to upgrade my studio monitor speakers because once I've dealt with the room and the room is dialed, the very next most important part to being able to hear all the frequencies and place elements where they need to and really polish my mix downs is having the right reference monitors. So what I've done is once I got the room set up, I wanted to demo a whole bunch of different sets of speakers. And there may be some that come highly recommended, and there's some that might sound good in one room, but it is very dependent on the room that you have. So you can take the same set of speakers and take them into three or four different rooms. And in some rooms, they're going to sound good, and in other rooms, they're going to sound terrible. So I wanted to get my room set up first and then demo a variety of different types of monitor speakers. So what this video is, is a little review of the different monitor speakers that I've tried out, and then I'm going to show you guys which ones I've selected and why. So I narrowed my choices down to three sets of speakers that I wanted to test out in my room extensively. The Atom A8Xs, which are these guys, the slightly smaller versions of these, which are the Atom A7Xs, and Genelec 8040s. And the reason why I chose those sets of speakers is because the type of music that I'm writing is bass-heavy electronic music. I'm not mixing country, classical, any, any really delicate stuff. I needed monitors that were able to slam in the mid-range, but also had frequency re response that extended all the way down into the lows. So that's why I chose the sets of speakers that I did. I also wanted to choose from some of the best names in the business. Genelex are kind of hands down some of the top dogs out there. I've heard that name many, many years in a row. They're pricey, but I really wanted to test them out for myself and see how they sounded. And Adams have quickly generated a reputation for uh, producing some really high quality speakers as well. So that's how I made my choices. So let's talk about the Adam A8Xs first. Physically, the speaker is a 8.5 inch woofer on the front, so they're beefy. These things have pretty significantly sized cabinets. They are a large speaker. And they have a bass frequency response that can go all the way down to 38 hertz. And that's usually subwoofer territory. So these guys are monsters in the bass department. But they also have a very interesting feature for me, which is this ribbon tweeter. It's called an XART. It's uh, accelerated ribbon technology. Basically, it's a ribbon tweeter, which has the capability to produce high frequencies far beyond the range of human hearing, all the way up to about 50,000 hertz. And what I've heard about the ribbon tweeters is that they give this very nice silky high end and that you can mix on them for longer without experiencing ear fatigue, which are all advantages. So those are some of the reasons why I decided to test these guys out. They have front ports in them, which was another advantage for me because I find with rear ported speakers, when they're firing bass out the back, if you're in a small environment like I typically am, then that bass is going to hit your walls and it's going to reflect back into your room and cause phase cancellation issues. So I actually found the fact that they port out the front to be quite an advantage. Also, ergonomically, they have a volume knob and the on-off switch right on the front as well. I don't like reaching around behind my speakers to flip them on and off, so it was a nice placement as far as the, the controls are concerned. Now, if we flip these guys around back, we have a balanced XLR in, we have unbalanced uh, RCA in, and then we have some trim controls. So you have tweeter level, you have a high shelf, which I believe starts at 2.5K. You have a low shelf, which starts at 300K or 300 Hertz. And that allows you to trim the curve of the speaker. So for example, if you're finding the speakers are a little bit hyped in the low end, like, like I did, uh, you can trim down that low shelf and you can have a little bit of room for adjustment on them. So let's talk about how they sounded. When I plugged these guys in and I started playing some tunes that I was very familiar with, I was pretty blown away with how they sounded. The bass response was like I've never heard, even out of similarly sized speakers. It just gave this incredibly powerful low end. I felt like there was a sub in the room, even though there wasn't. Uh, they're just incredible in the lows. And those ribbon tweeters 
also performed extremely well in the highs. They were silky, they were nice and accurately reproduced. The stereo imaging that I was able to perceive on these speakers was better than any other set of speakers that I've listened to to date. I could hear panning and movement and things like that that I've never been able to hear before. Partially that's because my room has the proper acoustic treatment, but it also is very much so to do with these speakers. Now, although I really, really liked the way they sounded, um, I actually didn't decide to go with these ones, and let me explain why. What I was looking for in choosing the right studio monitor for my speaker is a flat speaker, a speaker that accurately reproduces what's going on and does not flatter the sound. And I didn't feel like these guys did the best job at that. They actually gave me uh, a picture of the sound that was hyped in the lows and hyped in the highs. It was uh, almost more like a hi-fi speaker where they scoop the mids a little bit. And these guys, they sounded fantastic, but I don't feel like they were actually giving me a flat sound. That being said, on the back panel, you do have the ability to adjust down the lows and adjust down the highs. And I really feel like that's what would need to be done with these speakers to be able to have them actually be, be accurate. I would, um, you know, <laughs> given all the money in the world, love to just buy a pair of these guys and sit them in my living room and listen to music on them because they are amazing sounding speakers. But for producing on, not at the end of the day what I decided to go with. The other aspect of these that I think is uh, challenging in my room specifically is these speakers produce so much bass that it makes it problematic in my room. Even though I have full acoustic treatment on the walls, I have bass traps and everything, I still felt like these speakers overpowered my room. Because they produce so much in the way of low frequencies, I they almost, because there was so much bass going on, I did find it difficult to perceive exactly what was happening. It, the bass was loud, it was present, it was boomy, but it was kind of muddy, it wasn't tight, and I found it difficult to perceive exactly what was going on. So, an amazing speaker, they flattered the music, flat, not from my opinion, and ultimately, in, at the end of the day, they were not the ones that I decided to go with. Okay, let's talk about the Atom A7Xs now. They are very similar to the A8s, except instead of an 8.5 inch driver, they have a seven inch driver. And although they're in the same line of speakers and most of the components are very similar, they couldn't have sounded more different. It was actually incredible. It really threw me off how different these speakers sounded. What I'd heard from the reviews was that the A7s provide much more mid-range detail. And I definitely noticed that. There wasn't that same uh, extremely powerful super sub bass response. In fact, the bass I found kind of went the other direction in that uh, I, I couldn't hear very much bass coming out of them. If I was going to use those speakers for electronic music, I think I would have found them difficult to mix on. The mids were impressive. The stereo imaging was also impressive. And uh, however, though, I think that the mid range on those actually overpowered everything else. These ones I felt were scooped in the mids, the A8s, but the A7s I felt accentuated the mids too much. And at the end of the day as well, when I had certain sounds go through them, like my basses and my kick drums and things like that, I heard this honkiness to the speaker that I actually really, really didn't like. I think they would have been excellent speakers for mixing music that was a little bit more detailed in the mid-range, um, acoustic music, things like that. But for bass music, maybe it was because of the ports, but they gave this honkiness to the sounds that would come through them, specifically when it came to the kick drums I was using and things like that. So for me, they were off the table very, very quickly because I couldn't hear what was going on in the bass range very much. And the, the mid range was, was very detailed and very powerful, but at the end of the day, not exactly what I was looking for. Last of the bunch is the Genelec 8040As. They are the smallest yet most pricey of the bunch. And the Atom A7Xs are about 1500 for the pair. The Atom A8Xs are about two grand for the pair. The Genelec 8040As are about 2250 for the pair. That's in Canadian dollars anyways. Now the 8040s have a 6.5 inch woofer with a metal dome tweeter. So smaller woofers than the other ones. And the metal dome tweeter has the capabilities of going up to about 20,000 hertz. So on paper anyways, not as impressive a high-end stat as the Atoms, but does it really make a difference? Well, what remains to be seen. A couple other things physically about the Genelex is they have this die-cast aluminum enclosure called a minimum diffraction enclosure. And this is a casing that has been specifically designed 
to help the speakers produce a very flat frequency response and also to help improve their stereo imaging. Genelec feels that the kind of square box enclosures that most monitors are built in is actually counterproductive to their ability to accurately reproduce sound. So they have these kind of funky space age looking enclosures that are supposed to make a fairly radical difference on the sound. The other things I'll point out about the Jennies are they have these bases here which are called isopods. And what they're intended to do is to physically decouple and isolate the speaker from whatever surface it's placed on. For example, you should have your speakers behind your mixing desk on stands like these ones, but in some rooms that's just not physically possible. So if you have to place your monitor speakers on your mixing desk, then these isopods help to decouple them so it doesn't effectively turn your mixing desk into a vibrating surface that then really muddies up your ability to perceive what's coming out of the speakers. Another thing about the Gentle X is they port out the back. So they do have a bass port, which is intended to improve the bass response, but it ports out the back, whereas the Atoms ported out the front. On the back of the Genelex, they also have a much more sophisticated set of dip controls for different frequencies, so you can really dial them in to a more advanced degree than the Atoms. The Atoms are a little bit more rudimentary, you have low, high, tilt. Um, the Genelex have much more sophisticated controls on the back. They take a balanced XLR in on the back, and that is, physically speaking, our Genelex. Let's put down the stats for a sec and talk about how these bad boys actually sound. You know, you, your, your mind wants to tell you that the most expensive speaker is going to sound the best, but actually does it. Well, in this case, yeah, it did. <laughs> I almost didn't want it to because it meant shelling out more money, but the Genelex just absolutely wipes the floor with any other speaker that I've heard in this control room and this mixing environment. And the caveat that I'll put on everything that I've said in this video is, this is for my personal taste, the style of music that I write. The Genelex were the clear winner. So let's talk about what I liked about their sound. First of all, despite the fact that they were the smallest of the three, they still produced amazing bass response. Much better actually than the Atom A7Xs. When they produced bass as well, it didn't have that same hyped, over-accentuated quality that the Atom A8Xs did. I felt that it was a much more accurate picture of the bass. And even though they were producing less bass, the bass, I felt, was way tighter and more accurate. And that is very important to me as a mix engineer, to actually be able to distinguish what's happening and where I need to make my changes. I felt the A8Xs really overpowered the bass range and flooded the room with too much bass. It, was, you know, it sounded impressive and it was nice to listen to, but again, to be able to make mix decisions like that, difficult. I felt their high end was almost as incredible as the Atoms, but not, again, quite as impressive because I felt they gave a truer picture of the sound. Those XR tweeters, they, they sound great, but I think, again, they tend to hype the high end uh, a little bit to my ears. The mid-range is where these speakers really sung as well. That's where I noticed a weakness in the Atom A8Xs is I didn't feel like I could really perceive what was going on in the mid-range and I would have needed to dial down the highs and lows to really get it to balance properly. These Genelex just had bite in the mid-range. I could hear things with the snares and my synth leads and things like that that I wasn't able to hear previously on my other monitors that I've been mixing on. So I really, really liked the sound out of these ones. I felt that they really achieved what a proper studio monitor is supposed to achieve. They gave me an accurate and nice flat picture of the sound. They revealed the things that were not correct with the music I was mixing. But at the end of the day, when I nailed the mix, they sung and they really did um, allow me to enjoy the music. You're not looking for monitors that are going to flatter the music, but you're also not looking for monitors that are going to make everything sound like trash. You want to find that nice balance between knowing when you've nailed a mix and knowing that there is still work to be done. So that's... My choice, I've chosen the Genelec 8040As, and they are uh, these are a, a demo pair, actually, the proper pairs in the mail, and I'm very excited to be uh, mixing all of my upcoming projects on the Genelecs. So I hope you guys found some value in that, and um, even if you guys try out your own speakers and, and you know the Genelecs aren't the ones for you, hopefully my decision-making process and how I've gone about compiling the information and testing them out is valuable for you in your own rooms and your own studios. So. Have some fun selecting and testing out some different monitor speakers, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.